this game number one between Gabriella Gotti and Bingji Wong and see exactly what type of Pokemon are becoming going to be coming out into the fray. Well, for starters, we are going to go ahead and get a chance to see that Grimmsnarl and that Tapu Fini come out from Gabrielle's side. And for Bingji, it is that Spectrier and that Clefairy. Spectria, uh, certainly something that I wasn't expecting to see in the lead, but not upset about it. I think this is a Pokemon that can really uh, get an early lead and, and canter away with the game. So uh, if he can get it going and use that Clefairy properly to, to keep himself safe and, and cause problems to this Grimmsnarl and Tapu Fini, uh, this game could get very one-sided very, very quickly. See what you did there with, you know, can canter away? Uh, <laughs> well, we are going to see a, a follow me come first, which is going to keep this nasty plot that we are seeing from the Spectre really safe. And that was something that surprised me about Bingji's team is just how many Pokemon have these setup moves. But Gabriel playing around that really well here, going for the Dazzling Gleam, which is going to be able to hit both Pokemon, and then the Spirit Break coming out from the Grimmsnarl to be able to just double into that Clefairy and get it really low. Uh, but the Clefairy is there doing exactly what it needed to do. Yes, the Dazzling Gleam from Tapu Fini hit both. Did a good chunk, actually, to that Spectrier. But then the follow-up attack to try and deal with it from the Grimmsnarl went straight to Clefairy, and that's exactly what it wanted. It wanted to take those attacks. And that nasty plot now turns that canter into a bit of a gallop, right? And and if it starts <laughs> hitting attacks, it just it, it's going to be a good few, uh, few paces ahead. It gets its ability rolling. Uh, this game could could turn quite quickly, and that's something that, that Gabriel's going to have to be aware of and maybe try and find some defensive switches to, to answer that. Yeah, and something that I re can really appreciate about the Spectreer usage is that you do have a move set of Hyper Beam, Mudshot, and Shadow Ball, which means that you have a really wide array of those Dynamax moves to be able to choose from for when you do, in fact, Dynamax. And it's time. We saw the nasty plot already. It's time for Spectreer to get that Dynamax factor, and we'll see exactly what type of moves are going to be coming through. Uh, but there's so many great options. It's kind of hard to choose from. Well, you've got to answer it with something. The Spectre has got a huge boost to its stats that it could cause a lot of problems with. And now for Bingji, I think this really comes down to correct targeting uh, and being aware of, of what he needs to play around. And what the Clefairy can take away with the Follow Me is going to be really important here. And being able to say, well, I can take an attack from the Grim Snarl, but I can't do a Tapu Fini. I'm going to then let the, uh, the Spectre try and do as much work as possible. Uh, it's going to be a tough one here. As, uh, yeah, it's going to be some screens to, to try and help out, I think, against the Spectre. Yeah, well, here comes the Max Strike that is going to be off of the Hyper Beam. So it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Plus, there was a critical hit to boot. But Tapu Fini just going to go down like that based off of the Nasty Plot, the critical hit, and all of that base power coming out from that Hyper Beam Max Strike. Yep, and Grim Nay to just keep on going, of course, with those uh, additional... Uh, boost to its special attack. This is going to be a very problematic Spectre to deal with. It's uh, certainly not the easiest one uh, to to handle. And, and Tapu Fini, a Pokemon, you know, usually well known for being quite bulky and, and being able to stay on the field, especially after Dynamaxing, just completely fell there by the the combination Spectre and Clefairy. So Spectre is in a commanding position right now. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know if Gabrielle has answers ready to go for this, because um, it's probably not something he's seen uh, that often in these kind of matchups. I mean, we were already talking during team preview how it's not super common to actually get a chance to see Spectreer and Glastrier played together. You usually pick one, and it's usually the Glastrier, just because of its super impressive attack stat, as well as its ability to do a lot of damage. But Landorus now coming out for Gabrielle, which is going to intimidate drop both of the Pokemon on Bingy's side of the field. Um, but it, I, the fact that Spectreer can continue to go for these powerful max moves, uh, you can see that Bingy is kind of hovering over the max Quake or the, the Max Phantasm here. It's still going to be doing a lot of damage, especially with that Nasty Plot boost and with Clefairy with the Friend Guard by its side. You can just follow me here or just kind of continue to, yeah, to just keep the pressure away. Yeah, and uh, Gabriel's not even going to play out the rest of this game. He's realized that the writing is on the wall for him in this one. And quite honestly, Ooh. the Spectre is just too many furlongs ahead. 
He's not going to be able to catch it. Uh, it's just going to take a knockout every single turn. And he's going to spend just too much time. So instead of playing that one out, says, you know what? Let's not do that again. Uh, let's kind of ignore that situation and, and move on to game number two. So uh, adaptations are needed from Gabrielle. You cannot let the Spectre just do that to you again. Yeah, I mean, uh, coming out of just the gates, I feel like Bingy had such a fantastic setup with the Clefairy and the Spectreer, with the Follow Me just being able to take away so much of the damage from the Spectreer so that the Nasty Plot could get off without a hitch. Uh, but I feel like it's just kind of a, a big toss-up because you also have Glastreer on this team that Bingy is running that has Swords Dance. That's not something you get a chance to see every day either. And that's another setup move that you could put Clefairy right next to and just let it get the Swords Dance up. Yeah, there's a very clear strategy here from, from Bingji, which is uh, choose which of the new Pokemon you want and then, uh, yeah, boost it up for a turn with the help of Clefairy. Uh, Clefairy does such a fantastic job of, of drawing attention away, uh, the full-on bit and binder method there, just uh, causing a distraction and then being able to, to push on uh, and, and allow your partner to do exactly what it needs to do. You know, if your partner needs a little extra damage, you've got a little help in hand. If it needs to stay safe for a turn, you got to follow me. So a lot going on, but yeah, if, if either the Glastria or the Spectria get set up, they, they are going to be off to the races and you do have to back them for the National at that point. Well, let's go ahead and get this game number two started and see what kind of adaptations do come through from Gabrielle because there's some that are certainly needed and we'll see whether or not uh, Bingji decides to stray away from a formula that worked in that very first game as Gabrielle is going to lead with the Landorus this time as well as the Grimmsnarl. And uh, yeah, same leads here coming out from Bingji with that Clefairy and that Spectreer. I think I like this a little bit more just based off the fact that Landorus probably provides a bit more of a damage threat across the kind of two of them. Uh, yes, there was a nice Dazzling Gleam from Tapu Fini last time, but the Landorus is certainly a little bit more intimidating, just the, the pure amount of damage it can drop down on the field in a single turn. So uh, certainly a, a nice adaptation. It does, of course, still have spread damage available to it, and it looks like Bingy is going to change things up a little bit here in, in how he plays this game. Uh, already yeah. deciding that, you know, I need to get going with the Spectre uh, and just Dynamaxing it on turn one. Yeah, not playing any games this time, especially when Gabrielle's Landorus is running Rock Slide. Could just be the spread move necessary to be able to kind of stop everything. But uh, it's going to be a Protect coming out from Landorus this time around, not really going to be doing damage as uh, we will see the Follow Me come out from Clefairy. Just keeping that Spectreer safe once again as uh, Spectreer are going to fire off a max strike right into the Grim Snarl and boy does that do a lot of damage. Yeah, this Pokemon is very, very offensive and uh, causes problems. There's the, the little bit of life orb recall. It's not quite enough for a knockout though, so no uh, Grim Nay ability on this turn. Uh, but Clefairy doing its job just right there. Spectreer is still at full health, still just chilling out. Uh, and is able to, oh, sorry, a little bit below full health because of the life orb, but uh, <laughs> still in a, a good position to, to just attack again next turn. Uh, of course, if there was a nasty plot boost weaved in there, which, you know, would have been possible while the Landorus was protecting, this would have been a, a very different game. So Bingji, a little more conservative in this game and a little bit further back in, in the pack, not completely out there, uh, you know, taking every jump flawlessly, just in the pack, Still neck and neck, I'd say, uh, in this one. Yeah, well, Gabrielle has decided that it's time to hit the gas, too. And this time, it's time for Dynamax, uh, which is going to be the Landorus this time around. So Landorus now getting that Dynamax factor should be able to fire off some pretty hefty attacks here, especially into that Clefairy if it does decide to go for something like a Follow Me once again. It gets a lot more manageable to deal with the Clefairy when you're hitting it with max moves rather than just regular yeah. regular old spread moves. And, uh, you know, it could be afforded that opportunity a little bit better here. Uh, Grimmsnarl being smart there, setting up, obviously, some screens, getting uh, some defenses up. And that actually could be huge in, in helping out here. Uh, I like what Bingju's doing, though, getting the access to Grimnay. Yeah, just going ahead and, and going for the easy knockout here onto the Grimmsnarl that was already at such low health because of that first max strike that we saw. So Grimnay now coming through. A little bit of life will recoil, but Landorus now able to fire back with a max quake. And it's going to be going into the Clefairy because of that follow me. 
which uh, I'm not sure it's too happy about taking since it's going to get knocked out on this turn. Nope, and that's a really good adaptation in the lead. It took, you know, till the second turn to, to see it, but I think that adaptation has paid off in that he knows he can get the knockout a whole lot easier with Max moves coming off a of Landorus, um, you know, and he's going to be able to move in that kind of right instance. Um, Bingy again, I think, taking a, a step back, not quite clearing those first hurdles in the same way uh, as he did in, in game number one, and just kind of slowing things up and saying, you know what, uh, I'm going to try and get the Grimnay because I didn't get the nasty plot in there, uh, and, and playing around that way. So it's a very different game in game number two, and that's exactly what Gabrielle needed uh, for this one, I think. I would absolutely agree with that. And now we're in a position where it's tied up Pokemon wise, where both players still have three Pokemon to use in this game. But Dynamax turns are going to be a little bit different. Spectre is on its last as Landorus still has two to go. Tapufini now on the field, being able to pack quite a bit of a punch here if it's able to get off and running. Um, this Tapufini actually isn't using anything like Calm Mind to be able to boost its attack. Um, so it's just going to be dishing out raw damage here, which I think is super exciting for Gabrielle's side. Right, and this lander is taking uh, the Max Phantasm very, very well there. I mean, of course, the, the Max Quake helping out. Uh, the lander has Ooh. been hit a couple times for its troubles, um, you know, and it's, it's failed. But, you know, it didn't give over, very importantly, didn't give over another instance of the Grimnay to this Spectre. So, yes, it does go down, but... Importantly, it was able to to keep the Spectre in check a little bit uh, mm -hmm. by not getting knocked out to it. And the Urshifu is, is taken out very, very quickly in response. Yeah, uh, the fact that the Urshifu is actually carrying the Choice Band instead of the Focus Sash means that it isn't going to be able to stick around after that impressive Dazzling Gleam that just came through from the Tapu Fini. Um, but now we are down to our final two Pokemon on both sides of the field. Dynamax is over. It's just going to be raw horsepower here to come out for the end of this game. You've got Rotom Heat and Spectreer for Bingy. And for Gabrielle's side, you've got Tapu Fini and Kartana. I don't know how this Kartana is going to do, but it's especially in the face of that Rotom Heat, but you do have Tapu Fini next to it to kind of keep it a little bit safe. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting kind of board position, I think, for both players. The Rotom Heat immediately would look like a perfect answer to Kartana, but the Tapu Fini's there, and a, a smart detect or, or protect, uh, you know, would be able to get there. There's the detect, and this Rotom Heat, if it, you know, completely goes for it in this turn, uh, is going to struggle a little yeah. bit. So taking two attacks, huge detect there from Kartana. Uh, as Tapu Fini just says, you know what? I'm just going to put damage back down. Yeah, that was a huge protect coming in from Gabrielle because that not only negated one attack, but it negated two. And that meant that Tapu Fini was able to fire off such an impressive Dazzling Gleam once again, which is bringing that Spectre with well within knockout range here. Kartana is a pretty fast Pokemon, so wouldn't surprise me if it's able to get off something like the Beast Boost, if it's able to go after that Spectre really quickly. Um, I, I, this is a really impressive endgame here for Gabrielle so far. Yeah, Gabrielle, that protect is, uh, detect is actually massive uh, and buys him a lot of time. The, the Spectre is being put up against it uh, to try and deal with this Kartana. Uh, the Kartana, though, the choice of item, absolutely essential there. Uh, not getting knocked out because of that Focus Sash and is now saying, well, yeah, we just got to deal with the, the Rotom for a little bit and, and try and put that damage back because Dazzling Gleam should just get there on the Spectre. Right. Well, Thunderbolt comes out here. It was going to be enough to knock out Kartana, but it is going to be Tapu Fini now versus both Spectre and Rotom. Ooh, I'm so I'm so anxious to see what's going to happen here. Dazzling Gleam does come out. It's not enough to pick up the Rotom, but it is enough to knock out that Spectre, which was at such low health. But Rotom is faster now in this scenario. Can it fire off a Thunderbolt? And is one Thunderbolt going to be enough? I don't think one Thunderbolt's anywhere close to, to taking a knockout on Tapu Fini. I, I think it's going to take at least a couple. And now that uh, the Tapu Fini is not worried about the Spectre, could either mix it up from the Dazzling Gleam if it's locked on in, then it's just going to be able to say, well, it's single target now. So we're, we're good here. And, and this Rotom is looking perilously low and has already consumed its berries. So uh, 
yeah, the Rotom was in a great position, did its job by knocking out the Kartana. This Tapu Fini might be a little bit too much. Not even taken under half, so it may take two Ow. more Thunderbolts. Keep on Dazzling Gleam in there, Tapu Fini. The single target, <laughs> enough to push it over and send us to game number three in this fantastic set so far. Yeah, wow, what a fantastic set between both Bingji and Gabrielle. Gabrielle making some really impressive adjustments to be able to just hold out until the end game and then really push it over the edge with that Tapu Fini and Kartana combo. I think that's something that a lot of players have been doing to great prowess in a lot of these games that we've seen in the global finals so far, is just doing a good job of preserving just one damage dealer like that Kartana and, and something bulky, maybe like that Tapu Fini, to be able to just really get through to the end game. The Tapu Fini was doing a lot of work there at the end and just applying consistent pressure with those dazzling leans was enough uh, to roll the game all the way back. I think the change up to Landorus was really, really good. I think the way that the Landorus came in and, and provided a lot more than that Tapu Fini in the lead was really, really nice. And not getting caught by the nasty plot because you have to respect the Landorus and get that damage down a little bit earlier uh, was really, really wise too. So uh, definite change needed from Bingji. May have to look at weaving in the nasty plots. Uh, because the damage wasn't quite there in a couple instances from the Spectre. I mean, the, the Grimmsnarl took an attack, the Landorus took the attack very, very quickly, and that kept it very much a trot throughout the whole game. Yeah, and then another thing that I, I feel like was playing super in Gabriel's favor was the screen setup that we got a chance to see. Not only was it doing work against the Spectreer, just mitigating the amount of damage coming out from that Dynamax, but also in the very end there with the Rotom Heat too. Rotom not even being able to bring that Tapu Fini below half because of the screens that were set up. I feel like that was really impressive and very heads up play from Gabrielle too. That's exactly what the Grim Snarl is needed to do. It doesn't need to be dealing any damage or trying to knock out Clefairies or anything silly like that. It just needs to set up the, the right screen at the right time. And that swings a lot of matchups, I think. You know, if you're looking at the Spectre as a problem, you can get a light screen up. You're going to be in a good position. If it's the Glass Dray that decides to come in and, and keep things uh, kind of on the same motif, but with a slightly different style, then it's the Reflect that you need. And uh, it's definitely a good addition and, and becomes a lot more valuable when there's no nasty plot as well. So uh, Bingji might try and, and get that play in again, but the lead seemed a lot better from Gabrielle in that game. Let's go ahead and jump into game number three, shall we? And see whether or not the leads stay the same because it worked. And if it's broke, don't fix it, I think is how the saying goes. So it shouldn't surprise you that Gabrielle is going to be leading with that Landers and that Grimmsnarl once again. And uh, no change up here from Bingji either. It is going to be that Spectre and Clefairy once again. So really set up nicely here on both sides of the field, just recognizing, hey, this worked before, but I feel like you're absolutely right at in this situation, you really do have to go for something something different if you are Bingji to be able to bring this into your favor to finish out the series. It's really a case of, of how these first couple turns play out because that's been deciding, I think, the whole game uh, in, in how they, they end up kind of coming together and, and making sure that that damage hits. Um, I do think that Bingji is looking at a slightly audacious play here, uh, which is not follow me -ing. Um, and trying to, to capitalize off that and saying, you know what, uh, I can get a helping hand in, get that damage buff up, and, and then push on that way. So if he gets that, he can change up the game a little bit. You know, we know from previous games that Gabriel will attack and, and be res respectful of the Clefairy and, and try and get damage down on it. So uh, this could be kind of a really good read and adaptation based off what happened in game number two. But Gabriel's changing it up. No early protects this time as it looks like he may just be Dynamaxing right off the bat and trying to capitalize that way. Yeah, Dynamax Factor now going over to the Spectre on Bingji's side and the Landorus on Gabrielle's side. It's about to be go time and neither of these players want to let up the pressure at all for this third and final game of the series. But here comes the helping hand from the Clefairy as Grimstar goes for those screens very, very quickly to try to mitigate as much damage as possible that are coming through from this Spectreer. But Spectreer firing off the first attack. It is going to be going into the Grimmsnarl, but I think those screens were enough. Yeah, the, the screens are, are just so good uh, against these teams that try and take over the game very, very quickly. And now Gabrielle is able to start firing back super quick i mean not waiting any turns for protect he's very much in the same position as he was last game after the the max strike not getting a knockout there but already the landerus has landed a max airstream and that speed boost is going to be key 
for staying ahead of the Spectre. Uh, this game has certainly not gone Spectre's way, uh, and it's going to be a whole lot tougher to, to play around. Yeah, well, Follow Me can come out from Clefairy, but I feel like that's something that Gabrielle might be expecting. So I'm super, super interested to see how this next turn plays out because I feel like this is already getting into some of the big swing turns to see who's going to be coming out on top of this series. It was a really good change up of the play by Gabrielle. We were talking about the option to do that on, of course, Bingji's side uh, by moving away from the, the Follow Me, but the helping hand wasn't enough, and it wasn't enough because of the use of. Uh, the, the light screen right off the bat. There's the uh, second screen set up, so light screen and reflect are both in play. Uh, but this Spectre is just not going to be able to to get knockouts on its premium targets. It wants the Grim Nay. It needs to get those boosts to be able to, to pressure everything on the field. But for its troubles, you know, it's going to have to kind of look at this Landorus and say, well, you know, yes, you can hit Michael Ferry this turn, but at what point is Michael Ferry not able to, to take these attacks any longer? Yeah, ooh, yeah, bar barely holding on there. Clefairy is able to stick around for a little bit longer, which keeps the Spectre safe once again if Bingy decides to go for yet another follow me. Uh, but this is very even back and forth in terms of Spectre using the max strikes and then Lander is trying to use these max airstreams to keep the speed in check for one of these players. But it, so far, Spectre is faster, so the max strikes are doing a lot of work to keep this Landorus from being able to move first. Yeah, I mean, the max strike is important for, for controlling the speed, but there's, there's always that tough decision of do you go with something like the max Phantasm, get the same type of attack bonus, and, and maybe do that little extra damage you need to, to try and kind of push things over. You need every bit of damage you can when you're playing against these light screens, unless you have Brick Break and you can work your way through it. That way you're, you're playing the whole game against them now, or, or most of the game, a large percentage of it, and it's going to be tough to say, well, can I can I answer this and, and can I deal with it that way? So uh, yes, Clefairy can keep Spectre safe, but the last turn of Dynamax, uh, you know, if the if the Clefairy gets taken out before the Tapu Fini attacks, then the Tapu Fini just gets to go on the Spectre and, and could swing the game really, really quickly here. Spectreer already doing so much work, but now it's kind of up to whether or not this Clefairy is going to do something else. You know, do you read that Gabrielle is going to try to target it down and go for the Protect here? Do you go for the Follow Me, recognizing that Clefairy just might be on its last legs in this game? There's a lot of decision-making that has to come through in these next couple of turns, as uh, we do see that Tapu Fini now coming out onto the field for Gabrielle's side. Um... And with that choice specs, I, I mean, last game it was doing a lot of work, but is it going to be able to stick around this time? Uh, we're about to find out what happens in this next turn as Helping Hand comes through for the Spectreer. So Spectreer able to fire off yet another max strike, and it is going to go into the Tapu Fini, which uh, is not going to take that one too nicely. Yeah, didn't appreciate that, and the Helping Hand really, really important there. Uh, but this now comes down, I think, to what Gabrielle decided to target. Um, if he decided to respect the Clefairy, which he did, uh, you know, th this game is, is still very much in the balance. I think if he'd gone after the Spectre, uh, it could have been different. But, but Tapu Fini not getting completely knocked out there is, is huge. And, and once again, Grimmsnarl did its job with the early light screen super, super well. Um, you know, at the end of Dynamax, I think uh, this game could take a turn. And there it is. Spectre is just taken out. And, and this game uh, very much looking to be in, and I'd argue, Gabrielle's favor right now. Yeah, and we will see Bingji's final two Pokemon, which are going to be that Urshifu as well as that Rotom. But with the Tapu Fini now still on the field, hanging on here, um, you know, it is at really low health, so it's possible that something that might be coming up from the Urshifu, like a Sucker Punch, could be enough to be able to, to secure that knockout. But um, we have the Dynamax over now for the Landorus. I, I don't know how this ends. This is a precarious position for the Rotom Heat for sure. Yeah, the Rotom Heat probably can't do anything of significance to this Landorus. And uh, if the Urshifu spends time dealing with the Tapu Fini, that leaves Rotom Heat to deal with Landorus and, and you definitely kind of fall back a little bit. Of course, Gabrielle still has a Pokemon advantage as well. So even if uh, this uh, Landorus is, or, or Tapu Fini is taken out, um, you know, he still has an option in the back. That said, uh, that is a big knockout to land yeah. on the Landorus there. As that was a huge source of damage and, and so low. Uh, this Tapu Fini just, just taken out, I, I think. That Urshifu, uh, we talked about the item being a bit of a problem in, in game number one, but 
that's why this item is good. It gets mm -hmm. knockouts that you may not usually deserve, and that has even uh, shocked me, and I'd imagine shocked Gabriel a little bit too. Yeah, Choice Band, Wicked Blow, such explosive amounts of damage that it was enough to just get a clean knockout onto the Landorus. And that leaves Gabrielle with their final Pokemon against these two heavy hitters. Of course, because of that Choice Band, Urshifu is going to be locked into that Wicked Blow, but it's Kartana in the very back. And Kartana, looking at this Rotom Heat right now, is not appreciating this situation. Uh, no. This Kartana knows that it's uh, not where it needed to be, and, and I think um, maybe switching out something a little bit earlier there would, would have been uh, a little more optimal. And, and yeah, I mean, the, the, the wicked blow off the choice band, just so much damage, um, just able to, to get put down there. And, and really, uh, honestly, in the ma like as soon as that knocker went through, the game was just swung so drastically in, in Bingji's favor. And, and uh, it's just not often that you see this choice band Urshifu, and I think that that and the, the presence it brings has has swung this game so well for Bingji. So a phenomenal game one, a uh, phenomenal game two, and, and honestly, even closer in game number three between these two players. Bingji carrying on in the winner's bracket.